Did it mean to press the play button yet? What is up you guys? It's me, your girl, Casey. How you doing? I am very aware of how I pronounce girl as girl. It's like I can't say my L's. But hey, I don't know if you guys noticed because my brain is still in like March of 2020, but it's 2021 and it's halfway done. Like, the heck. And apparently I've written some books this year because when I'm trying to think back on the books I read, I'm like, what? It's 2021? What? I can't remember what I read in 2021, but good thing I wrote down actually what I've been reading in 2021 because now it's time to jog your memory on what I read in 2021 with the mid-year freak out tag. Who better to do the freak out tag than an actual freak? I got la questions. And the first question starts out right properly with, what is the best book I've read so far this year? The best book was actually probably the first book I read this year. And that is The Lies of La Clamora. Oh look, what was this? A picture of me crying while reading this book. What? I usually don't emote with books because you know, Heart of Darkness right here. But The Lies of La Clamora is what happens if Oliver Twist started like this crazy criminal ring in this fantasy world with jumping sharks. Sharks are terrifying, but this fantasy world has jumping sharks. Oh, you're just minding your own business walking through a meadow? Well, bam, jumping shark. You're just chilling in your basement playing cards with the gang? Well, bam, jumping shark. They're everywhere and there's gladiators that fight them. People punching sharks. It's like despicable me up in here. In this fantasy world, the humans, we people, the us people, it's like there was this older race, but something happened to the older race, but they left all these buildings behind. So the humans, they're just like, hey, nice digs you got here. I claim it. It's free real estate. So now we've got these human peoples with all this cool technology, but it's still like fantasy-esque. And we're in this really Venetian-inspired city. So, you know, canals everywhere, but also very Victorian england -y. You know, the old-fashioned Victorian England where, like, you couldn't walk two steps without stepping on a dead body or some debris. So this is the setting. Jumping sharks, poverty, and a bunch of criminal activity. And it's our boy, Lock Lamora, who has grown up in all of this and how he's setting out to be the dang best criminal out there with his trusty pals. And this book is phenomenal with the friendships, uh, the tears, the laughter. Uh, honestly, it was a banging way to start 2021. My camera light died just like my hopes and dreams. Do I have an extension cord? Maybe. Bad one. Now we can have proper lighting again. But do you know who really lights up my life? You. But like not actually literally. It'll be weird if you just start glowing. I might actually scream. Oh my gosh. That was horrifying. Ooh, just a little top heavy. All right, question two. It is predictably, predictably, Obviously. What's the worst book I've read this year? I've already read the worst book. Wait, nope, I didn't look at the questions. But I'm gonna tell you right now what's, what's the worst book I've read already. That's right, I'm making up my new question for this tag. Worst book, okay? Even if we break, this author don't care what their name is because they should hide because I do know what their name is and I will find them and just ask them. Why? 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 Why did you write this? I mean, I've hated some books in my time. Again, but better. Ah, Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. But they at least had one redeemable factor. Again, but better, has a cute cover. Haruki Murakami can actually write. Even if we break, has fine grammar. That is all I can say for this horrible book. What it lacks is a good plot, a good thriller twist, good villain motives, an actual character for their characters. Everyone is a stereotype. And a book that's honestly about breaking stereotypes. You can't escape your own stereotypes. You have the rich girl, who's a jerk. You have the jock, who's a jerk. You have an autistic character, who is sadly, her only personality trait is that she's autistic. Not a banging job. Honestly, looking back at this book, I'm like, how? Who sanctioned this? Why did you write this? I have to sneeze. <coughs> I'm allergic to hatred. Okay, where was I? Best sequel I read this year. Okay, so last year, I think, maybe, no, it was this year, I read Caraval. I was meh about it. 
meh. Because it had promised, just like the night circus. Oh, we're going to this magical carnival where dreams and nightmares collide together in explosion of glitter and bloodshed. Stuff like that. Like, ooh, we're gonna get into like a carnival circusy competition in order to win something big and glorious. Something that would make us want to betray our loved ones. Well, kinda. Is that rather a cool circusy fight competition that I wanted from carnival, carnival? Caraval, whatever it's called. It was more like a scavenger hunt, which is a quest, and I hate quest. Also, it started out from our protagonist Scarlet's point of view. Scarlet's the older sister. She's very overprotective, very stuffy, stick up her butt, but I kind of understand that it makes sense for what she's gone through as a character. She's had to be like the mother figure for her sister Donatella. She has to take the abuse from her father. It's like on her shoulders to marry well so she can like provide a better life for herself and for her child. Child? No, sister. My light died again. But honestly, Scarlet being in her point of view all the time was super annoying. Don't recommend it. The only thing really keeping me in that book was like, I liked the carnival. It was cool. But also the ringmaster of the carnival, legend, mm -hmm -hmm. spicy, love him. And we're like, oh, who's this legend character? What's his name? What's his story? I was into the intrigue there, but then like our main character wasn't that wild. Thinking back on it, there's a lot talked about in the first book that were big points in the first book, but were never brought up again in the second and third book. So I gave it a three. I was like, mm, did I really feel like reading the next two books? No, but did I already purchase the next two books for some reason? Yes, so I read them. And girl, good thing I did because I found like my new crushes, which is another question later on. I'll go ahead and tell you now. Okay, so there's this guy named Jack. Actually, it's called Jax. I don't like saying Jax as a name. It just, it doesn't flow properly. Because when I think of Jax, I think of like those things. The spiky things, you know. But he's cute. Definitely the bad boy of the love triangle, which is, oh my gosh, my weak point. Then we have this other guy named Dante. You know, he's all like tattooed and stuff and dark, mysterious, and a playa. Hot. And we even switched main characters. We're no longer in Scarlet's point of view. We're in her younger sister Donatella's point of view. In the first book, it did Donatella dirty. It made her look selfish and just... Oh my gosh, I hated her in the first book. I'm like, I hope we never find you, Donatella. Because that's what most of the quest is in the first book. We have to find Donatella. And that has Scarlet all in a huff. Like, oh, Frazzle, who's my sister? Like that throughout the whole book. So she wasn't a fun protagonist. So yeah, I went into the second book being like, why am I in Donatella's point of view? I can't stand this child. But I love her. I would die for her. Well, actually, I would kill her to be with the two beautiful men she's like in the love triangle with. But I still love her. I just want her boyfriends. So, ooh, love that sequel. Loved it. Mm. It redeemed her as a character. She was fun and witty and smart. Everything Scarlet was it. Scarlet, honestly, one of the worst characters I've ever read. In the third book, she, Scarlet, is now in a love triangle herself. She's got like her main squeeze from the first book. I think his name's Julian. And then this random guy who we haven't really met, but she's like, how will I know if Julian is the right one for me if I don't have anything to compare him to? Just put your forehead right here. Yeah, just, just feel that. Question three, new releases you haven't read yet, but want to. Let me pull out my Kindle, okay? I, I, ever since I started doing those new anticipated releases video, my TBR has just, gained weight. Where did I put my Kindle? It's not actually a Kindle, it's a tablet, an iPad, but I just call it a Kindle. I'll be back. So one that I'm actually going to read this month is called Rabbits. I talked about it in my last anticipated release video. It was a podcast. Now it's a book. It's a standalone. So you don't have to read the pod. You don't have to read the podcast. Ugh. You don't have to listen to the podcast before you read this book, which is good. But I listened to the podcast anyways. It was fun. The voice acting could have been better. But that's an anticipated release I'm gonna read this month. But ooh, there's one called The Plot. It's that fourth wall breaking, I think, thriller book where like this professor, he hasn't accomplished anything in life and he has this like upstarty student who's like, I have a great idea for a book and I'm gonna do it right now. Mr. Professor's like, you will never accomplish your dreams. That's what my mother tells me every night. But 
student guy. He's like, oh yeah, well here, read what I have planned. So Mr. Professor is like, oh gosh, this is actually pretty good, Mr. Student. I support you. Mr. Student's like, well, thank you, sir. And then he dies. Mr. Student dies. And now Mr. Professor is like, I will not let this young man's work go unfinished. So he publishes it. And you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But then years later, at the height of his fame, he gets a message calling him a thief. Who sent the message? That's the one I'm really excited about, but I got a bunch. Most anticipated release for the second half of this year. Okay, let me Google this. I was told this is happening, but I need to verify. Okay, so we just talked about this chick. Stephanie Garber wrote Caraval, legendary finale. She's not writing a sequel, but she's writing like a companion series. The first book is called Once Upon a Broken Heart, and I couldn't find any particulars. But I was told it's coming out this year, and I'm told it's from my man Jax's perspective. Because he kind of like just disappeared at the end of the series. And I'm like, where'd my bro go? And I want to go with him. So I'm excited for that. I just honestly feel in my heart that me and Stephanie Garber would be best friends. I just, I feel it. Because she can actually write really pretty. I just couldn't feel that in the first book. Wasn't my favorite. You know what? I just don't like Scarlet. Worst female protagonist ever, I say very exaggeratedly. There's worse, but she ruined the series for me in the beginning. It took Donatella and a bunch of sexy men to save it. What is my biggest disappointment of this year? Besides the view every time I look in the mirror. So we talked about the lies of Lacamora. Have you heard of the sequel, Red Seas Under Red Skies? I hated it. <laughs> I gave it a two. So it went from a five star first book to a two star second book. So the prologue was wow, hooked. But by the time, okay, so it, the prologue, it starts out with our two guys, our two hero guys, and we're pointing crossbows at these two villain guys. And we're like, you gonna shoot first? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then, cause we're on the good guy's side right here. And I got my friend over here shooting a crossbow too. My friend, he swims at me. What? And so we got Lock Lamora right here having three crossbows pointed at him, one from his best friend. And it's like, best friend, why are you betraying us? And then just cuts right there. And then the story begins a couple years earlier or a couple months. And so I was hooked. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get to that part and know why our friend betrayed us. Y'all, I got clickbaited. <laughs> Let's just say when you get to that part that was hinted at in the prologue, it don't actually work out in the context of the book. The first 33%, because I see this book in thirds, the first third of the book was amazing. Gosh, ah, oh, loved it. I can't tell you much of the setting because it's the sequel and crap went down in the first book. Go read The Lies of Lock Lamora. It's really good and pretend it's a standalone, please. Anyways, let's just say Locke, he's got this new heist idea and it's been been in the works for a couple years now and it's about to get to the big part. But then some stuff comes into his life and he has to change plans. Plans that involve him getting on a pirate ship, learning the pirate trade. However, once our main man steps foot on that pirate ship, it all goes downhill because we had the high intensity drama and setup from the first part. So we were almost to that criminal climax. But then, oh no, no, we gotta go on a pirate ship for a couple of months, let's go. And we're on that pirate ship, just sailing for part two and about half of part three. Then we're finally back to where we were at part one. So basically this middle part did not need to exist. And we could have just shoved these two parts, the first part and the third part together and it would have been a better book. It's like so much in the first part was promised. Then we paused. And I think the author forgot about all the promises he promised in part one. And I was sad most of the time. It was honestly kind of boring to read. I wasn't as excited, but the banter was still good. The chemistry between the friendly characters, great. Everything else, eh. My biggest surprise of 2021, honestly, it was Caraval, the sequels, so good. But I used it already. But let's talk about the only good Indians. Not that I was surprised, well, kind of. Because when I go into a book, I literally know nothing about it. I don't try to learn stuff about it because I like going in blind. Unless someone tells me, hey, this has your favorite trope in it. Or hey, I hated this book. Because for some reason, people's hatred motivates me to read it better than someone telling me they love it. 
I can't explain it. It's just how it is. But I went into The Only Good Indians thinking it was like kind of a fictional contemporary something like that. I was so wrong. It's horror. Supernatural, paranormal horror. And wow, just some crazy stuff went on in that book. That was the surprising part. Like honestly, I just felt like every weird thing was happening over there and I'm just like the, a bystander just looking at all these people. And I'm just like, what the heck are you doing? But it was entertaining. It's about these four Indians. They were involved in a horrible, horrible thing that they initiated years ago. And because of that horrible thing, an entity has arisen from the universe to enact its revenge. So now it's hunting down each of these four men to get that revenge. And it's it crazy, yo. There's a lot of weird junk in this book and I loved it. The ending fell a little flat, but it's still a four star read. Highly recommend it. You too will get a phobia of deer. I hate deer. <laughs> Who is my favorite new author? It'll be me when I finish writing my book. <laughs> but I actually read a Frederick Bachman book this year, Anxious People. I honestly don't know why I even bought this book. Don't, don't misinterpret me because I love this book. It was either like a four or five. Loved it. It was so, so funny. But I never really had any drive to read it. And I don't actually remember buying this book, but I have it. So it happened. I think I got the hype. The hype got me. So I picked it up. And I don't think I was expecting much. Oh wait, I actually had read a Frederick Bachman book before. I hate saying this title. It's this book. And the way that poem gets longer and longer every morning. It's a long title. But it's only like this big. Like 30 pages. It's a short story. It's about this granddad with either Alzheimer's or dementia. So he's losing the memories. And it's about his grandson who's trying to keep the memory train flowing. It was so cute and I cried. So I like that author. But this Anxious People is a good chunky story, like 300, 400 pages. And ah, uh, fell in love. So good. Usually for like a contemporary like that, it takes a lot to get me into it. Cause you know, I like having dragons and monsters and just all sorts of murders happening in a book. So with contemporaries, humor is pinnacle. It's what I require most in a contemporary, besides some really good characters. In this book, nailed all of it. You could absolutely argue that the characters in this book are a bit like too much. Like they're larger than life, not really believable, but they were sure entertaining and I love them. So because of this book, I need more Frederick Bachman. Although I do know he's like a tear your heart out kind of author, like Robin Hobb, my newest fictional crush. Wow. Jax, Dante. Oh, let me just pull up everything I read. Okay, La Clamora, that guy named Jean. Um, Henry from The Secret History was pretty dope. Wally from The Good Sister, Piranesi from Piranesi. Okay, I can't remember any of their names, but like three people from A Shadow Bright and Burning. You know what, let's add Tao from A Rage of Dragons. He's pretty dope. The villain in Ready Player Two for being the best source of drama in that horrible book. And so far that's it. I mean, I listed like 10 people, but is that ever enough? You know, good thing I wrote down all the books I read this year. I can't remember diddly squat. Oh, I just finished the Scorpio races. So let's add Sean to that list. It's pronounced Sean. I thought it was pronounced Sean. News favorite character. I just listed them all. I'm skipping that one. A book that made me cry. The Lies of Locke Lemora. Read it. A book that made me happy. Oh my gosh, anxious people. I don't care that I'm repeating these prompts or examples. Anxious people was dang funny. Like I laughed aloud. Pit of Darkness Casey giggled. The most beautiful book I've bought so far this year. You know what? I'm actually using it as a tripod right now. Look at this. Come here, you. Huh? Okay, that's a cool cover, right? Okay, that's not the one I was looking for though. That one's cool. Yeah, but look. Tan purple. Tan, no, this one. I love this cover. House of Salt and Sorrows. Very moody looking, but look at this, look. Hey, what book are you reading? House of Salt and Sorrows. Oh, did you forget what book you're reading? House of Salt and Sorrows. Oh dang, I forgot what book I'm reading. House of Salt and Sorrows. Wait, one more time. House of Salt and Sorrows. Why do they do that? Why do they waste paper like that? I have questions. Do I have more questions? Do I have one more? Oh, what books do I need to read by the end of this year? All of them, come here. You know what, come with me. Okay, behold everything. All my unread books. 
Aren't they gorgeous? So yeah, this is my TBR. It's impossible. <laughs> you know what? This is a thumbnail. Just, hey, well, since I'm down on the floor now, I'm not getting up. Ooh, wait, I like this book. This is a good cover. What else I got in here? Like, I buy so much stuff, I don't know what I have. Hmm, I like this eyeshadow. Blue. Anyways, y'all, that's the mid-year freakout tag. It was glorious. It was swanky, like you. And now that's it. You know, laying down, I can't think that well, so I don't know how to end this. Huh, yeah, I'm up. Huh, okay, right, that's my tripod. It's a chair with an ottoman with a drawer thing, and then I usually stack like two or three books on it. Boom. Quality equipment right here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to freak out with you guys at the end of the year. I already know I'm gonna do a tier ranking of all the books I've read. That's why I've been keeping track of them, because typically I've only done like, oh, top five favorite male characters, top five favorite villains, but those videos take a lot. So I'm just gonna knock it all out with some giant tear raking video. And I've never done a tear raking before. So it's gonna be dope as coke. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, stay beady, my friends.